Yeah, you look like a chipmunk. You like swollen. Does it actually look like <laughs> No. Because I asked I asked Alara, I was like, yo, does my face look swollen? She's like, no, you're tweaking. I was like, okay. Because it does hurt, like right here. That's why I think they're growing in. So you're gonna get them taken out? Probably. <sighs> That's gonna be painful. Then I will be a chipmunk. Only for like a week or so. Once the swelling goes down. So I mean this really doesn't need a proper introduction, but this oh this is Liv Allen. Hey. This is the second time Liv Allen has come on the podcast. I don't really do introductions. I just I'll stop touching my face. I now. just roll into it. <clears throat> so we were kind of talking before the podcast started. Uh I mean really no direction that we like need to go to, but we were talking about mental health and I asked you a question about how you maintain your mental health. I feel like mm -hmm. This topic is always relevant, especially like in the chaos world that we live in right now, where yes. there's like when you get on the media, there's literally just it, it seems like everything's imploding. So mm -hmm. like, um, how how do you take care of your mental health? What have you learned over the years? Because I know like some of your issues. You told me a little bit about like mm -hmm. depressive disorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just a refresher. Um, I have. Uh, major depressive disorder and one thing that has been a game changer in my life and I know this isn't this doesn't go for everyone but um, I am medicated now that was started in 2020 yeah started in 2020 um, and has really helped um, the best way I can describe it really is that imagine you're like out walking in like a parade or something you know what I mean like just noise like so much going on just shit everywhere and then you're walking walking and then you take a step into a building and you shut that door and everything kind of just goes quiet you know what I mean mm -hmm. that's the best way I can describe it is like my head before was just so the, the medication is the thing that balanced you out from stepping away from that noise yes I think that I wouldn't say like I'm not here to say like my medication like has fixed anything because like I still struggle like it's still a daily struggle I would say but it has really helped me reach that like calmer baseline if that makes sense to just mm -hmm. kind of regulate me and then one thing that I've gotten a lot better at actually is so a way that I kind of handle my mental health is by constantly occupying myself like as you know I'm very involved in school I play a sport like I'm just constantly doing 10 different things at once um and like I find that like maintaining that level of like busyness really helps me because I have less time to just ruminate guess, like, yeah but um that also has its fair share of consequences um this summer for example uh, I had that internship with Iowa Watch which for those who don't know is a non-profit news outlet um predominantly working with like investigative reporting, um, which it was great. Um, it was a great experience. Um, definitely good resume bo booster and published now. So over, it was a great experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, but I found myself just at a constant level of like, just stress. Like I lost like close to 10 pounds this summer unintentionally, just because I was so stressed and I was constantly moving. And if I wasn't moving, I was, like researching and thinking and just kind of freaking myself out and um Suzanne actually who was Thank my you. boss yeah shout, shout out, out to Suzanne shout out to Suzanne um actually told me that she would make me at points take breaks and there was like one there was one day where I actually woke up and I was like physically sick like I was like yakking and I told her I was like hey like I might not log in till a little later like here I will I threw up like I'm not feeling great and she was like no you're taking the day off she's like you need to learn how to take brain breaks and mm. like um so that was something that I have really implemented in my life is just like kind of looking at my day through like a wider lens and realizing that I have a lot more time than I think um and just I'm not shy like I'm not afraid to take breaks anymore and like you know um which before that was kind of something that kind of scared me a little bit. I was more like, like, you have to get this done now. You have to do this. Oh, don't forget about doing this. But I find that, you know, if I just do stuff that I enjoy, whether that be watching something or going visiting 
a friend or just walking around or working out. That has been really, really helpful and something that I, not to flex, have been doing really well at. So that's awesome. That's a long answer to your question. No, that's a good answer because I think a lot of people have the same issues. And I know for myself, I've more so struggled with anxiety than depression, but I have experienced depression. And that was one of the battles that I had to kind of uh, go through is it just feels like there's like this constant race against the clock. And I remember my last like full semester. So in the spring and you and I, I think we only had practicum together, but I just felt so busy all the time. Like I was constantly stressed and I, I don't, I've never had major depressive disorder. So I don't know what the differences are between that and like, a, mine's always been like generalized anxiety or OCD. And so, like, there are times where, like, I just have, like, rapid thoughts just, like, popping mm -hmm. up, popping up, popping up, popping up. And, like, I could never get myself to just actually relax. And I had that same feeling mm -hmm. of, like, you feel like you got to get all these things done. I remember the first day of classes in the spring semester just freaking out, thinking about what the workload was going to be like and how I was going to accomplish all that. And I even, I had a talk with Samantha, or not Samantha, but uh, Suzanne, for Iowa Watch, because uh, in my um, the class with Brian that you have to take before you graduate, I don't even know what it's called. It's like the multimedia. No, we don't want that. So, uh, so mobile social? No. I forget what it's called. What, what you, what Not practicum. It? It's it's like your senior seminar you have oh, to take. Capstone. Capstone. Yeah, and uh, so I worked with. Suzanne and I just remember having because we would check in every week over zoom and I would tell her like you know like I just feel like fucking stressed and I don't know how I'm gonna get 15 interviews by the end of the semester mm -hmm. and she's like dude you just gotta pace yourself and I don't know what it is you know cause there's a lot of people our age and older and younger that deal with mental health but I think it's part of one of the mechanisms in society that has tricked us into thinking that we have to always be putting out a workload, whether that's for school or so like now that I'm done with school, you know, I'm always thinking about like podcasting or doing YouTube videos. And if I don't have like a solid idea in my head for the week, you know, I feel bummed out. Like, mm -hmm. fuck man, I didn't get any content mm -hmm. produced. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's like something you have to learn as you get older. I I'm way better at it now. I mean, there are times where I still struggle with my OCD, but I've been a lot more lenient and relaxed and this summer was a huge improvement for me um, because I've taken so many leaps and bounds mm -hmm. in my mental health journey. Uh, my problem is is that I just like get really discouraged when I fucking struggle mm -hmm. again and yeah. I'm like oh man this shouldn't be happening. It's like yeah but it's it's never going to be perfect either. Mm -hmm. Yeah and like the you have to kind of separate yourself from societal expectations and then kind of strike a medium between, you know, the goals you have set for yourself and then your own mental health and well-being and kind of, you know, find that balance to where, like, you know, I find myself, I hold myself to a really, you know, high standard and at points I'm like, is this even realistic? Like, I'm doing this to myself. You know what I mean? Like no one's, no one else is making me feel this way or no one else is like, you know. I'm laughing because I relate. Yeah. I have the same issue. Like I don't owe anyone any of this. This is my own brain tricking me into thinking that I need to be doing this or I need to be looking this way or I need to be, you know, whatever. And that's something that I think I have also kind of grown a little better at just reasoning with. I still definitely struggle with it but you know just acknowledging that like hey no one is making you do this or no one is saying that you have to do this like except for yourself you know what I mean mm -hmm. so yeah I have the same issue uh I mean like if people could see my um board up here like with my goals and everything like I have such high expectations and that's that's a double-edged sword because mm -hmm. I mean it, like it's it's yeah in some ways being a perfectionist has really helped me because I think like you're always on this journey of self-improvement and that's that's great to have but at the same time you know if you take that too far you're just completely self-critical over everything that you do and I think that's what's played into a lot of my social anxiety is like I want to control other people's perceptions of me and so like 
there's a term for it. I think it's called metta, and you learn this through meditation. I mean, like when you're talking, there is a there's a voice in your head that's judging the things that you're saying, and there can actually ego. there can well, it might be ego, but I think there's a term for it called metta, and I don't know if that's just like the recognizing of what's going on, but if you get proficient at meditating, you can really distinguish between those two voices and you know, have a better time with focus, mm -hmm. like in a conversation. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've always struggled with that. And I think that's, that's what ramps up some of the mental health issues is the perfectionism is because like perfectionism isn't, it's a, it's not a real concept. Mm -hmm. you can, really nothing real. is perfect. It's, mm -hmm. and I know that, or going through therapy and becoming more self-aware over the years. I know a lot of it definitely stems from my childhood. Uh, and, I, and I don't blame anything on my childhood. I just recognize that that's kind of created the mm -hmm. person that I am. Yeah. But I always felt this constant need to um, please my dad because he was very like aggressive and loud as a kid. And so he scared the fuck out of me. And like I always like wanted to put things together so he wouldn't get upset. And then as I got older, if you don't recognize those patterns, you just mm -hmm. keep kind of creating the same mistakes. And I've noticed that, you know, a lot of these things for me and anxiety, it's, it's just me getting in my own way. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it's like an up and down process. It's never going to be perfect. I'm just like trying to tell myself every single day, as long as that will take, because those brain patterns are very much hard, wired. Very rigid, very hard to break. Yeah, so it and takes a long time. That's the frustrating part, is that, like, if I could go back in time and just smack the fuck out of my middle school and high school self, like, <laughs> you know, you're about to waste so much energy on this stupid shit that uh, no one else cares about except for you, like, <laughs> what like, you? I just really, I really look back and I'm like, damn, like, I really wasted so much time, energy, emotion, just so much on just, like, Shit that doesn't even matter, or just st stupid shit about. Here I go again, not being able to fucking speak. That's just okay. A lot of <laughs> time and energy wasted trying to fit this mold that I'm. My own brain is trying to, you know, trick me into thinking that. Isn't that the do. interesting thing? Like, do, do you practice meditation at all? No, because that's another thing where I find that if I'm just left alone to ruminate like that. It's not necessarily helpful for me. I think it would help you out a lot because it's not really rumination. It's going to feel very foreign when you do it, but when you sit down with your thoughts and you're not distracted by like social media or your phone, I like to do it first thing in the morning because I feel like that's the perfect time to kind of cleanse your thoughts and have a better like set of intentions to your day. Um, but you recognize that a lot of your thoughts are just programmed from either your parents, society, friends, situations that you went through in high school. And you'll be sitting there and you'll have a memory pop up from like high school or something, maybe with like your first love or whatever. And you're like, where the fuck did that come from? And then it produces a set of emotions. But in the times that I've gotten really good with meditation, because actually it's surprisingly, it's very hard, but... Uh, you just kind of see how like your thoughts and your emotions are kind of out there and you don't always have to engage with them. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a part of kind of going along with what we're saying. I mean, I don't know why you have major depressive disorder. Could be from events in your childhood. Same thing with me. But I think a lot of it too is just like we are very distracted as a society. I see so many people like on campus when I'm walking around just like scrolling on their phone. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that shit adds up like it will just confuse the fuck out of your mental mm -hmm. space. Yeah. It's, that's a whole nother conversation. Just how, you know, we're seeing these rising levels of, you know, mental health issues and just despair because, you know, we live in a very, I guess, superficial society. And on top of that, you know, you can delve into other things like the issues brought on with capitalism and, it's just so complex and you just really have to try to separate yourself from those societal, you know, standards and expectations. I think that's the most, one of the most, you know, healthy things that you can do for yourself, especially in terms of like, you know, managing a workload or setting goals or determining success. You really have to try to detach. But on the topic of 
meditation. Um, I, this summer especially, I would, you know, I was obviously driving very far to go to my parks that I was covering. Um, and I found that that, and then just like going on long ass walks and just listening to music and just thinking, I think you can maybe categorize that as meditation it because is. it really was it just is. me, you know, walking. I had my AirPods in, yeah, but I wasn't on my phone. I was just, you know, listening to music, kind of like, I guess that background buffer in case things got too <laughs> intense up here. But I, yeah, that's where kind of I did a lot of thinking this summer and I guess a lot of growing in that sense. But yeah, meditation can come in different forms. It doesn't, people think that you just, sit and cross, and, and cross yeah and close your eyes and it's peaceful and you just zen the fuck out and it, it, like I said it's one of the most challenging things to do but there is different forms of meditation like walking because well you'll know I mean if you're by yourself especially you just kind of like catch your thoughts drifting mm -hmm. and then you just kind of return yourself to the present moment of the beautiful nature around you and it's a great grounding mm -hmm. exercise because for thousands of years, our ancestors walked more than they sat. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people should get more in touch with their natural surroundings. I mean, like Definitely. earlier on in the summer, when I went through the breakup with Jaden, like I was, I was devastated and I started just doing like 30 minutes, like walking outside and I like hated it because I wasn't getting any relief from it. But I think it's so foreign to us that at any time you try and create a new habit, meditating, walking, journaling, like whatever, it's going to feel very uncomfortable at first. And your brain is going to be like, no, like, let's go back to we the couch. We aren't ready for this yet. Yeah. And so, I mean, you just have to keep up with it and know that in the beginning, that's like the biggest hurdle, but it has turned into one of the staple marks that like really helped me this summer and facilitated a lot of growth because I would just use those walks to like literally talk to myself out loud mm -hmm. and try and think through a lot of my issues or my problems. Yeah. And I would always just feel like recharged by the time that the walk mm -hmm. was done. And then the or last- just relieved, just like a sense of like, hmm. Yeah. And the last- More at peace than I was before I left. Yeah. Well, and then the last time you saw me, like now I'm doing the weighted vest. Yeah. <laughs> With 40 pounds. The, the Sergeant, Sergeant Poots vest. But Fuck yeah, dude. You I better think, salute me if you see me on campus, <laughs> Simpson students. And I think music really comes to play there, too, because, you know, obviously, I love the music that I listen to, and um, I'm very, in, I take that stuff seriously, um, and I think that listening to music on those walks as well, like, I would hear a lyric, or, you know, just the music itself would invoke some sort of emotion that would make me think of something, and then I would think about it and reflect and address it in my head. So I found that that also helped, you know, maybe those times where I wor wasn't necessarily ready to just kind of zone in inside my head, I would focus more on the music and then that would kind of be a ripple effect into deeper self-reflection, which I thought was also very helpful. Yeah. I mean, when you listen to music, are you mostly impacted by words or sounds? Cause like, when I was younger, I think I was more so impacted by the lyrics, but as I've gotten older, I feel like I have more of a keen ear for sounds, and I'll go back and listen to songs that I grew up with, like in high school, or, you know, I mean, just mm -hmm. say like Mac Miller or whoever, and I'm like, I don't remember like pointing out that, like it sounds so much more clear in my head than when I was younger, and I've heard of this song, mm -hmm. you know, a million times. I know. Like I people are different listener, listeners or like learners too, like visual I learners. I take value in both, honestly, because there are some songs where I will fully admit like the lyrics is shit or they're just really superficial Drake. or they- CLB. <laughs> or they just, you know, they don't mean I, anything, but I like to, like, I think the instrumental or just the production side of it is really good. So like, I appreciate that as art just as much as I appreciate, you know, really in-depth lyricism because I think m music is obviously made of both. So, I mean, there are songs where there are both of those elements together. There are many mm -hmm. songs like that. And I think that would make up the majority of, you know, my playlist, but then there are also songs where the beats are just hard or I really like, you know, how the music makes me feel. So yeah. I think, I think I, I'm a listener of both. But That's I think it's a, I just... lot, it's a lot easier to like a song that has, like, 
I think it's a lot easier to appreciate a song that has better lyrics than a song, you know, it's got to be really good production to make up for shitty lyrics, I think, whereas it could be a somewhat basic or less exciting production, you know, behind, but if their lyrics are really good, really good rhyme scheme patterns, just subject matter too, I think I appreciate that more. If yeah. that makes sense. You I kind of explained that in a really weird way. Basically, I'm saying that it's a lot easier for me to like a song with good lyrics and mediocre beats than it is for me to like a song with shitty lyrics and, you know, lukewarm production. Well, and what I was thinking in my head is... It has to be is, really good for me to like it with shitty you're, you're really torn on those songs where the lyrics are not very great, but the production is great, or the sound is great, and it invokes such a feeling. I'm, I'm like, torn on if I really, like, want to put this into my playlist, because I'm, mm -hmm. like, yeah, I've always prided myself on lyrics, and you and I were both journalism majors, so, you know, I write always in my journal. I, I've done poetry. Mm -hmm. Everyone has always told me that I'm a very, like, eloquent and thoughtful speaker, so I think naturally that's what I'm inclined to attach myself to when I'm, I'm listening to music. Forward. But I, but I love the combination of both. Like uh, the song I'm thinking of right now is "Garden Shed" by Tyler the Creator off of Flower Boy, because that's that's when he was like admitting to himself being bisexual, mm -hmm. and that song. I mean, it's, it's it's not just the lyrics and the subject matter, but like the ascension of the the production as you go through that song, and when he opens up like that, it just blossoms. So I mean, it literally like fits the cover of the album. And I love an artist like Tyler, too, going deeper into music, like, I always like looking at album covers. Mm -hmm. And if, if they match the the um, the imagery that's painted through the songs, like, it's like, when you listen to the song, it sounds like what this looks like. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I can appreciate a good... It's funny, so, one artist that I think of when I think of both lyricism and you know, just absolutely top quality production is Kanye. Um, and I was going to bring up, like, my favorite um, album of his is My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. And I am a fan of that cover. Um, it's a lot more minimalistic, obviously, than that one. But I just think it's really cool. I, I like the aesthetics of it. Um, and I just thought it was funny that I thought of that because when you look at Donda, where it's just, I was kind of disappointed, bro. Like, you couldn't have given us yeah. something more colorful. Well, I saw one, but I don't know if it was just, like, a promotion or what, but I thought that that was going to be the album cover. And then, I don't know if it was because the drop was rushed by the label that it was just black, and he... I, I don't know. Is Did he ever explain? Was there a reason by, behind having a black cover? He might have. I haven't heard of it, but it's also just Kanye, so Kanye yeah. will do whatever the fuck Kanye yeah. wants. Um, and you know, it would obviously. I think it would honestly check out if he decided to just leave it black because he was having some altercations with his label about releasing the album. You know, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You yeah. can. You never really know what he's up to, but you, you, to you gotta respect him as an artist. I mean, so many people have condemned him for the things that he said or done, but you cannot argue with the fact mm -hmm. that he's a creative genius with whatever he touches. And yeah. usually it's people like that that end up being so controversial because either you're going to, your fans are going to be diehards and they're going to love you to the bitter end. And True. then at the same time too, you're going to be very polarizing to the people that mm -hmm. don't like you. Yeah. But it's so funny how it was him and then Drake releases his album and his cover art is fucking terrible as well with the emojis of the pregnant women. The two most and like hyped album of the year. Just, Arguably just, the two most hyped albums. I just can't take him seriously, just, dude. He's such a bitch. Like you can't believe anything that he says in his raps. He's just, to me, I will, okay. To everyone that thinks that I'm just out here to hate on Drake's existence, I can tell you, I think Drake is a great artist. Like, um, and, oh, sorry. his older albums. I'm uh, much more of an old Drake person than I am uh, any of his. What was the one, what's the one where the, he, it's like the blue cloud? Yeah, like, nothing will ever be the same. That is the, that's yes. one of the best albums of all yes, time I, in the genre. That album is... That thing Chef's is kiss. that thing is nostalgia. Oh yeah, the song Tuscan Leather, like one of like 
my favorite songs of all time. This that whole album was great. It literally makes me think of fall and I think October. Take Care was great also. Like Take Care. So yeah. you, like Drake has definitely got it and I definitely think he is a great artist. And you can't argue that like man no like the dude knows how to make hits. But I definitely am the type of person that thinks that numbers don't necessarily correlate to greatness because I think artists like Drake you know, they have that ride or die fan base. And I think he just knows how to pump out songs that he knows his fans will eat up. And like, you know, he's just kind of like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I just think that he does not take any more. He doesn't take creative risks. No. He doesn't try to diversify his music. He, his lyrics definitely need some fucking work because that man said, it's, that man said it's looking oppy outside. That alone was enough to just drop CLB a notch what, below what the one And then about, he said, what? I, like, oh. said my girl's a lesbian girl, me too. Why? Great. Why? Great. Why did you say that, Drake? <laughs> Tell me. I'm, I'm here. Tell me why. I hope he watches this podcast. I hope you watch this, Drake. That'd be amazing, you can explain man. to me why. Get, get your fans on... On the hot seat over here and explain why you did what you did. But, like, that was my thing with CLB. I I don't think it was a shit album. There were a couple songs that I did like. Even a couple of the songs that you definitely could tell he was catering more so to his fan base. Or he was just like, you know, like, I'm just pumping this out because I know it's going to be a hit. Because I know it's what the kids like. Like, way too sexy. That song's hype as fuck. Like... I can get down to that song just because it gets me hyped. Like that's the type of shit I would listen to if I was like getting ready to go out or something. You know what I mean? Champagne poetry. The lyrics weren't there for me. He also bit that off of. Uh, I literally can pull it up. Um, I mean, before people come after me, I understand it was a sample, but I think when you're sampling another artist's work or another like piece of sound, I think you gotta cut it in a certain way or at least chop it up to where, you know, you can tell it's a sample and not something that you're just trying to completely like repurpose or just throw new lyrics over. But like uh, Navajo by, I think it's Miss Psycho, is that how you say it? Oh, uh, like, I've heard of the artist, like, but never listened. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you know. That literally sounds the same. No, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying is yeah. like, I love that, but I know that it, you know, I like that version better than Champagne Poetry. I don't know. It just, I was just kind of unimpressed with COB, and then on t you throw the corny lyrics on top of it, and I was just like... I think that's why, like, people like us that really respect evolution and mm -hmm. artists have a hard time with it, because it's so repetitive to see him do the same thing over yeah. and over, and I feel like... When you get to that point with that much success, I think even J. Cole was talking about that on his last album, like you run into a lot of creative blocks because you can fall victim to making things that you know you f your fans will mm -hmm. like. But yeah. I think some of my favorite artists like Mac Miller or Tyler, I think we talked about this on the last podcast, is just because it's it's experimental for them and it's always a different sound. And mm -hmm. I always feel like, like, I can only speak on Mac, I just felt like he, every album just was him stepping into what mm -hmm. actually at that time was his natural sound. And same thing with Tyler, like, he's just always trying different shit, and I mean, that's why he is where he is at right now, and he was talking about, you know, being relevant for 10 years, and he was getting canceled before cancel culture was mm -hmm. the thing, and I just like those artists more, so it's, it's nothing against uh, Drake, because you can respect him for the oh, amount for of... Sure you know, success that he's accomplished, mm -hmm. but it's just, he's not going to be the type of artist that I'll listen to. I went through the album, but I think I pulled, like, four songs from it that I actually mm -hmm. liked, and I probably pulled, like, you know, at least 15 or 16 songs from Donda, because yeah. Kanye is just... I, he's just, like, up here, man. He's just, like, can't fuck with Kanye. Let me tell you one thing. So, for the listeners who don't know, I went to the Donda listening party in Chicago, which was his final listening party before he dropped the album. Um, and first of all, just, I know you've probably seen pictures of the stage with his, you know, the recreation of his home, but 
just the aura in that uh, stadium was just like you knew something great was about to happen. Like you knew this was going to be just a once in a lifetime thing. It was just like you could. This sounds this sounds so corny. This sounds like a fucking Drake lyric, but you could really just like feel it in the air. Like just the atmosphere was crazy. And then he walked out. He played Jail. That was his first like song. Take what is your love? Yeah. Oh, he, had, shit. <laughs> he made like a collage of clips, like n like clips of himself. Well, actually, so videos or pictures. Videos and pictures. Yeah. It was a mix of both. Well, so, okay. So actually, he like came out to the Donda chant, which mm -hmm. was kind of scary at first because um. it was it like went dark and then it was flashing pictures of his mother when she was a child, which that was cute. But then it would like. It would like flicker off and on and like the chant itself kind of sounds like a little like eerie so like that was like the opening and everyone was like looking around like whoa like what's going on and then he started playing jail and he was playing that montage in the back and it kind of just like gave off the vibes of like Kanye's here obviously like he's acknowledged a lot of like the shit like just unhinged shit he has done and like He's become he's like come to terms with his own like mental illness and like bipolar as well. So like I'm not here to I guess shit on him. Like I obviously condemn a lot of the stuff that he has said and done publicly, but I also understand that I will never un I understand that I will never understand what it is like to live with bipolar. Um but I think it was he was trying to make a statement like, you know, here's all this shit I've done. And here's how I'm growing from it almost. And, you know, obviously we all know he's come to terms with his faith as well. So he was kind of building off of that. Mm -hmm. But it, I looked at it as kind of a revitalization of just himself, his career, his music, obviously. Um, and I thought it was really cool. Um, oh, man. I'm, like, getting goosebumps even <laughs> thinking about it. I almost started bawling when they played Hurricane. And I know, you know what part I'm talking about? No, because like I said, I've only gone through it once, so Jail is the one that sticks out to me the most. Like, when I tell you, I think my pupils dilated when I heard this in concert, and just like the echoing of it all, like my, I have goosebumps, like, Travis came out. That was crazy. Um, uh, the song "Praise God." It was when he came out, and that one was also one of my favorite songs off the album. But like, I didn't even see him at first. It was also he had a lot of people on stage, but they were all wearing masks, so it was kind of hard. Um, I know the baby was there. We don't know. We couldn't tell if like he had Young Thug up there or. And I honestly haven't even, like, gone back to look through, like, to research to see who it was. But it was really hard to tell, um, because we were kind of just, we were like, okay, is that Thug? Like, is Lil Baby up there? Like, did he bring up Cardi? Like, but, um, Travis was there, and, like, did no he one, perform? No one could see him. But, like, he start, they started playing Praise God, and, um, all of a sudden I just see someone, like, walking along the side like this, and I just hear... Shaking the top, and I was like, yo! <laughs> I, and then I like saw his hair too eventually, but like just like the cadence and like Travis, uh, like I've seen Travis perform before. I was like, Shit. that's epic. Yeah, we actually saw him fall too. He like he like went to the side of the house to like grab some water or something, and he just tripped. <laughs> okay, Travis. Well, he's a pretty insane performer himself. Oh yeah. No, I mean, no. we're talking about guys like Kanye and and uh, Travis, they're much more than just artists. Like, I, yeah. I swear to God, they're like visionaries. And that's like, the thing about Kanye is he, he makes that type of 
stuff and experience. Not only listening to the album, but like obviously like attending a concert, a listening party. He made that a whole ass experience. And like not that any concert wouldn't be because obviously like if you're going to a concert you are experiencing something. But like you know what I mean? Like it's, it's the more theatrics, thoughtful. the theatrics yeah. of it. Like he he really took the viewer into account and like tried to like you know, really connect and make it feel personal. And I just thought it was crazy. And his shows have always kind of been like that because what, for a time there, he was doing like that floating stage mm -hmm. where people were literally like underneath him, like reaching up and praising to him. Yeah. And there was one part, and I actually think I posted this one on my Instagram, but there was one part where like, obviously this was a listening party. Like there were some people who knew some of the songs from listening to the past ones, but like overwhelmingly people didn't know these songs that he were playing, that he was playing. And so, like, there wasn't, like, people were obviously, like, bobbing along, like, dancing and stuff, but it wasn't the type of, you know, it wasn't the vibe you would see at a concert where everyone already knows the album. Yeah. It's like, obviously, you know, once you get a feel of the music, you can move to it. Yeah. But, like, there was this one part, um, he played Heaven and Hell, and it's, like, the entire stadium. Like, you can even see it in my video. It, like, looks like it was just shaking. It was crazy. That's so you awesome. were allowed to record, even though he had... Mm -hmm. You can, like, see everyone's, like... You see the crowd? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be an interesting experience because nobody really knows the lyrics. They this is the first time they're getting exposed mm -hmm. to the album. Yeah, it was crazy. There was uh, this one guy sitting in front of us who must have like illegally downloaded the well, album or leaked. something. It leaked, didn't it? Yeah. yeah, but this dude sitting in front of us, like he knew all the words and he was vibing. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. Um, there was, I think it was off the grid, the song off the grid. I don't know if you remember it with Cardi. Um, there's another feature, but uh, my friend who I went with, huge Cardi fan, like huge, like the type that thought that whole lot of red was like a godsend, which like the more I listen to a whole lot of red, the more I actually like pick out like, oh, okay. Like he really did something here. Like at first I was like, what is this? But like he was being experience, like experimental. And like the more I listen to it, the more I appreciate it. And like, there are a lot of, cool remixes that like SoundCloud artists have made of some of his songs that I really like. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I was kind of, not a hater at first, but at first I was like, we've been waiting for this, but anyways, moving on. Um, it was the beginning of Off the Grid and we just hear the what? And my friend looks at me and he goes, because he was like, is that Cardi? Because like, that's like one of his ad libs, but we weren't sure if he, you know, if you know, mm -hmm. Kanye was just sampling it. And then we hear it again, and my friend was just like, yo, yo. And then we just hear, um, off the grid. And he was like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but I, I really liked Cardi's verses in Donda as well. He was in, um, uh, he was in Off the Grid. What other song was he in? Um, Junior, I think. Junior Part 2, mm. perhaps? Now, there were so many features, like, it's hard to keep track of. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. Yeah, he did. I think I really liked Baby Keem's feature. Um, have he's you been one, listening? He's you one I just dis I, he's one I just discovered, and I went through his yeah. album, and I'm like, it's actually pretty good. I mean, I probably like like half of the songs, but mm -hmm. that what Family Ties with Kendrick Lamar is. Like, yeah. Whoa. Speaking of speaking of music, I've been listening to lately. Actually, I can't believe I didn't mention him earlier, but Baby Keem. Um, you know, I I heard his song Orange Soda. The bitch sitting like this is pretty thick. That. And I was like, well, it like what it like went viral on TikTok, and so I listened to it, and I was like, okay, like this isn't really my type of rap, and I was like, but you know, like I'm a diehard Kendrick fan, and this is Kendrick's cousin. So oh, so they are cousins. They are. Yeah. Okay, I was trying to figure that out with yeah. the title "Family Ties." Mm -hmm. No, they're and cousins. And he gets two features from Kendrick on the album. Mm -hmm. And Kendrick also helps produce uh -huh. the album, but so I was like, I like I definitely think this kid's gonna like. 
The what? Yeah, because yeah. he he just sounds different. I, the song that sticks out to me is that first song, Trademark USA. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure there's like a beat switch. Yeah, th there's, there's a, beat a couple switch beat switches in that album. There's a beat switch really in Family good. Ties, and fuck, I love Kendrick. Top five tonight. Top five tonight. I am the only guy. Fuck yeah, oh. it's it's good to hear Kendrick because. What was that statement that he released on Instagram about, is he retiring from music? Well, he doesn't want I don't it. think, it's not confirmed that he's retiring from music, but it is, he will be releasing his final studio album. So that's not to say he couldn't be doing, like, is he's been taking one? a lot of different creative, like, ventures, like, with that, like, PG Lang thing, which I'm not, I'm still not even entirely sure what that is, but, um, yeah, he just announced that that will be his final album with top dog so that's not to say that he's done i really don't think he's done i really hope he's done. can't be but you gotta use music as a vessel but yeah no i really like that album and then just on top of that a lot of people didn't because baby keems yeah a lot of people didn't um if they a lot of people were talking about like how they weren't impressed with Kendrick or like they were like, yo, what is he doing? Like, why is he like doing like, cause they have like a lot of weird, like ad lib moments and mm. stuff. I don't really know. But in my opinion, like it just sounded like they were having fun. Like Kendrick was trying new things. He was doing some different stuff with music. Like obviously baby Kim has a very different sound than he does. Um, I don't know. I just looked at it like two cousins just, I enjoyed it. I, really I don't. I don't remember yeah. what the second song with uh, Kendrick sounds like, but that Family Ties one I saw mm -hmm. on Apple Music, and I just was like, "All right, let's give this a try." Who's Baby Keem? <laughs> Kendrick's in there. I was like, "Yo, this shit actually fucking slaps." Yeah, and it's well, very refreshing to hear a verse from Kendrick Lamar in 2021 because mm -hmm. everyone's been oh, hyping up his his album, and if it is the last one with TD, that's gonna be a sad moment because. I feel like they've been one of the staple mark groups in rap for a while. I mean, you got like Schoolboy Q, J Rock, Absol. Never really was a big fan of Reason. He had a, a questionable line about Mac Miller on his last album about his overdose. Mm -hmm. it seemed like he was just trying to get attention from that lyric, but TDE, fuck man. I grew up on SZA Schoolboy. SZA, I grew up on Schoolboy. He's got to be releasing some shit here soon. I know. Right? He's another one. I would hope so. Fresh I'm really Talk excited was... for um, Utopia as well. Who's that? Tra Travis Scott. Oh. Very excited for that one. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't... My music selection has been kind of just subpar lately. I don't... I don't really have anything to speak on. I'm trying to think of, like, who has released an album that I really... What did you think of... Did you listen to Nas's album? I did. I don't remember all of it, but I remember... You got Lauren Hill on there. Yeah. That was pretty... Impressive. I was very impressed because that's my first exposure to Nas, and you were telling me that I had to go back and listen to Illmatic mm -hmm. to be considered like a real rap. Did you do that? No. I started with that. You heard it here. Loser! Guys, he's not a real rap <laughs> Well, I don't know, and I, I kind of go different than just rap. Like, I really like John Mayer's record. I don't know mm -hmm. if you ever listened to him. Uh, Soul, um, <laughs> Solar Power by Lord was a good album. Um, you weren't too fond of Brockhampton, but I thought they had a solid oh, project. I like Brock no, their last album. I remember oh. you telling me that you're like, yeah, I mean, a lot of those songs were just kind of sleepers. I don't really. I, it's hard to remember because it was released yeah. back in April, so mm -hmm. you kind of forget it. You kind of push it to the side. I didn't. I was just kind of in the middle with it. I didn't hate it. it there is were some. Middle. There were some songs that I thought were good. Um, I'm really excited for Kevin Abstract's solo. I think he's. Is isn't he, he supposed to release a solo album soon? Is this solo or was he gonna do one with Matt Champion and Joba? I don't know because he just released that. He's been releasing single. singles. He's released like two or three singles. The Sierra one had Nights. Slow Tie. I really liked that one. Slow Tie and then uh, Ryan Beatty, who's always come I through. I heard that one, but I heard Sierra Nice. I really liked that one. I don't know, but if he does release his solo album, I will definitely listen to it. Well, and I thought they mentioned that they were going to, as a group, as a collective, they were going to drop one more album in 2021, and then they're set to go on a tour next year and i'm gonna to go to either kansas or minnesota to see brock hampton because all i know fucking is, love brock hampton all i know is that when kendrick has his final tour my ass will be there don't care where 
Don't care when. You've really blossomed. Liz. I will go. Liv. I just called you Liz. Damn. You your first concert was Kanye West. And let's say your second concert happens to be Kendrick Lamar. That would be crazy. That'd be epic, dude. Because those are two artists that are in your top five. Oh, yeah. And those are your first concerts. And you saw Travis Scott, too. Yeah, Travis. Travis was there a little baby was there. Perhaps others that I just couldn't tell because of the masks, but. What? What's this? I never got the full scoop on what happened between Ken and Kanye. Why did, did they, did okay. that get leaked to the public as to why they split up? Well, they're back together now. Yeah, they like... So some of those lyrics he like, he, don't make sense. He though. re-proposed at the, con at the listening party that I was at. I literally watched her. <laughs> what? She came out in a gown and he got on one knee at the very end. That was after he lit himself on fire. He lit himself on fire was extinguished. The concert literally ended with Kim walking out in the gown and him getting on a knee. So they never got divorced? I think they they did split up. Cause in jail it's like sing well, don't let me so bad. Yeah, I mean I think this was I think this was a very self reflective album though. So it definitely could have been him at the time. Reflecting. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I'm not really I don't get super duper into the personal lives of the artists that I like because I just I'm a true believer that you you can't idolize not that I'm not saying that you do but you just you can't idolize you can't hold a standard for any celebrities or politicians no and I don't ever look in the media I was just it was like a question that popped up in yeah. my head because if they split up you guarantee you're gonna hear about mm -hmm. it in the media and then what didn't that happen did that happen with Travis and uh, yeah they Kylie? separated for a while but I think they're also they they were never like in a bad situation though hmm. like I think they still co they co-parented the entire time I don't think there was like a huge falling out but I'm pretty sure they're back together too I would say, I, I, do, I like barely pay attention to the news, so like people will ask me about something that has happened, I'm like, I have not, I have not heard about it. Speaking of like trying to keep your mental health intact, I, I just like, if you consume too much of that shit, mm -hmm. it'll drive you crazy. Yeah, for sure. Well, when do you have to leave? I was going to say we should probably wrap up here soon. Well, I just, okay, yeah, let's wrap it up. Like, what are your, we are kind of talking about earlier about what your life might be like once you graduate. What are your, do you got like a five-year plan set up? You're going to do that to me? You're really <laughs> going to do that to me right here? Right no, now? you don't, you don't have to have. This fucking mic turned on. You don't have to have a concrete answer. Just like, what, I mean, what do you think you want to do? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um. She's mad at me from last time. I exposed her. <laughs> um, I, to answer your question, I don't really have a plan aside from the fact that I want to start reporting in a bigger metropolitan area. I'm not too picky where. Um, I would be open to staying in Des Moines. I would be open. I'm looking at like the Omaha area because that's where Connor lives. Looking there. Um, I would look in like Kansas City. Um, I don't know. I don't think I am financially ready to move to somewhere like Chicago, but that's definitely somewhere that I would love to work and report at some point. But yeah, really anywhere that will hire me so long as it's in a big city, because I just think that's so much more sustainable in, you know, in the journalism field. But also I just, I, I'm not a small town gal. So like, I would just prefer to live how did you get through living in Indianola? Because we're, I mean, we're, we got a decent amount of people. We got like 16,000, but this is a small town. Yeah, it is a small it's town. It's funny that you, that Indianola popped up on your radar. I always yeah. ask people that are from, well, you're not from out of state, but if, if you come down here, I'm like, why did you choose Simpson? Because Indianola, like mm -hmm. it's off the map. Well, it's, here's the thing is, I mean, obviously I was recruited to Simpson for softball. Um. But the proximity to Des Moines really helped. Um, my mom's side of the family, they're really small town also, but just having all of my little cousins that I didn't necessarily get to see grow up, you know, until college, being close to them was another, you know, attractive feature of Simpson. And then 
Des Moines is really close. I really like Des Moines. Um, so that really kind of put it a couple notches above some of the other like meaderies that I was looking at for softball, like Warburg. Like, there's not shit in Waverly. Like, I'm not <laughs> sure. Like, I mean, I know it is pretty close to Cedar Falls, but like Indianola, I think is has a lot more to offer than Waverly as well. But I mean, and then at, like upon coming here, I was surrounded by like my best friends every day. So like, I didn't really need to worry about being in a small town. Mm. Does that make sense? And like, I also just know that like, this is college. So like, it's not like I'm really tied here. Well, and Simpsons kind of, it's, it's kind of odd because like when you go on campus, it feels a lot different than what actually Indianola is. There's been yeah. times like when the weather is beautiful, like in the summer when I was graduating and walking across the stage, like I felt like I was in California or something. Like mm -hmm. there's such a beautiful aura to that campus, especially mm -hmm. when the sun is setting. Um, but I, it's different for me because I've lived here my entire life. Mm -hmm. Well, mostly I, I was born in Arizona, but moved here when I was three. And so I'm kind of like just dying to, like I was saying earlier, get out to Utah mm -hmm. because I feel like you need to get that experience. You like, you at least got to try and go somewhere different, whether it works out or not, because at least you had that experience and yeah. you wouldn't regret it. And Indianola is a great place to raise a family. So like if I were to meet my forever girl out in Utah, there is a chance I would think about maybe coming back, but I gotta give myself that opportunity, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that'll be really good for you. We leave on the 13th, it's Wednesday. I gotta get this podcast out before then. Yeah, you best, you best be doing that. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> she gave him the handgun. Do you have an outro? Live out, no, I, no, I never do, I just, just like, okay. <clears throat> I don't even have a handshake. Yeah. <laughs>